you lost your accounts like two or three times already during the show. How how does that make you feel? Um, <laughs> so the thing about me is, mm. I believe that village people will always strike. <laughs> but Why? build an army that would always still come back and that's what they've been able to prove regardless of whatever happens and I, I i just had in my mind that it would always bounce back even when i heard about that like oh yeah sure thing you didn't feel some type of way like ouch i could be like on 400 or 500k right now what, what what's your current follower we're on 107 now Ooh, but that's not bad for a new account though so that's, that's always bad. bounce back so, yeah. okay we'll okay how did you describe your connection with with siege um true brotherhood mm-hmm. um even even the one time that they made it look like we had the problem which was when i kind of like was explaining to why I would speak to a Sean or why I would speak yeah. to OC because yeah. I just needed a different perspective on things. Because as my brother, you will pet me. Sometimes I need that um, daddy touch mm-hmm. of, or oh, this is how your mental handle the situation. But for us, the house even brought us a lot more closer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people, they've been saying that when Suja and I were speaking, you wouldn't really understand what we're saying. That's how we connect. Like from a mile away, I can tell what he's able to say to me that's yeah. how connected we were okay fair enough i mean yeah i did i did catch that as well i mean we saw the bond the diary sessions but to be honest during that whole thing with anita where you couldn't talk to him but then you were talking to other housemate it was like okay what's going on and you said something like he was all about the game um why are you uncomfortable talking to him about you know every situation um so like i said he knows me better than ev- everyone mm-hmm. and um there are bad times that um, I went to him and he spoke to me as a friend mm-hmm. and as a brother would. Yeah. And anytime I took to him to like some situations, I already can tell that this is how he's going to say it to me. So, like I said, I just needed that hard touch. Even with the whole Anita situation, mm-hmm. sometimes he would just say, bro... You know, you just have to chill. Remember who you are. Remember, I'm like, bro, I know you love me, but this is not what I want to hear right now. And that's what I was meant I mean, to. Yeah, it's a game eventually. Yeah. He needs to screw your brains, right? <laughs> <laughs> eventually. Um, so another, before I even get to the expected questions, this one, I was like, why? Why? You ended up facing eviction yeah. you know, that particular week due to your failure to hear instructions. And oh, yeah. unintentionally, you put yourself up. And that was a very dicey week. Yeah. Very, very dicey week. Yeah. How did you? F- how would you have felt if you had gone home, actually? Uh, I, no, I would definitely not do media rounds because my, my, my mother is coming to knock my head <laughs> first. And I'm going to have a headache throughout that That week. was annoying. <laughs> you were so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I felt extremely bad. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but... What, what was the biggest lesson you took away from that situation? Lucky for you, you were not evicted. But what's the biggest lesson you took away from that situation? I would even say the biggest lesson I learned from that week is the lesson I even took out from the entire game. Mm-hmm. Um, life is learning and unlearning. And with what even Big Brother told me that week is that you're allowed to make mistakes on your road path to success. Mm-hmm. And it was just a very huge mistake. And I just learned to be more careful when you're doing stuff. Okay, yeah. fair enough. So I'm not comfortable with this one person thing. So I think I'm just going to be throwing the questions yeah. generally. So everybody, you know, talks, you know, different. So I'm going I'm to go to OC. You were competitive. You and your brother, you were mature. Uh, you were kind of like the handy so to the money. People say we're competitive in, in what aspects? Like uh, winning games, head of house. You don't think you were competitive? I think it just came natural to us, but... Um, Is this your bragging now? Like, yes, <laughs> what, what? Yo, excuse me. I have my own uh, perspective on these things. Yeah. Uh, like, if you want to talk about competitive, I'll say somebody like Sean was competitive. Mm-hmm. Wow. In the sense that any small thing, he goes damn near. Remember, there was a time he even, um, because he thought when he told us the, an answer to some question, he damn near got mad at her. That's what I call competitive. Okay. Uh-huh. Because you can still be naturally good at things and try to win. But I'm looking at it for more like some people angle. want to win by any means necessary and they don't like if somebody else does anything like that's what I So I, you're I, saying you don't try so hard it just it just happens to be a winner. Before you guys go this quote. But what healthy oh, level of competition? Yeah. Like but then else. I mean if we talk about competitive housemates you and Ozzy would fit into that category okay, alongside well, Sean. 
maybe. Okay, no problem. I also kept things classy till like the last few days. We're going to get to that. But let, let's start from this. You know, coming from like a well known family, like the M, by the way, is a name that Nigerian is, uh, you know, aware of. Of, of course, seeing you in, in Big Brother, it's like, what? Ozzy and, you know, Ozzy Duran right there. So, how challenging was it to put yourself out there in public? Me, I always had respect for the platform. Yeah. You know, first and foremost, I've seen the platform change the lives of many people mm-hmm. and take them from not being known into um, elite sphere. So I had yeah. respect for the platform. So I didn't think there was anything um, so bad as for anybody, as they say, to be on the on the platform. Mm-hmm. That was other people's thinking. Um, I thought it would be a, a very interesting challenge for me and my brother to kind of see how um, we could fit in another type of society mm-hmm. and to give the public an opportunity to see a completely different side and also to change this perspective that just because you have a name or you come from a certain type mm-hmm. of family, you cannot be relatable, you cannot make fun of yourself and you can't do challenging things. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for you, it wasn't a big deal. You just wanted to go there. So for the pair, though, the Unbody Way Twins, you, your brother was more of the controversial one. You were more of like the reasoning... However, quite a number of housemates think that you were more of the strategic one. Um, what would you say was your approach, you know, to the game? And um, do you agree with that assessment when you say you were more strategic playing the no, game? Because honest to God, I've, I've been saying this over and over again. Like, I didn't have a strategy going in there. I was not somebody that watched Big Brother religiously before I went into the. I wasn't somebody that watched the show religiously before I went into the house. It, when I got into the house was when I found out there was. Because I remember they asked me things like, smile like you want head of house. I'm mm-hmm. like, what is head of house? I swear. Really? You didn't know what head of house was? I didn't know what head of house, custodian, sponsor tasks. Mm-hmm. I, I had no idea of all these things. So that's what made the, the challenge interesting. And that's what makes me proud of myself. I didn't know all these things, so I couldn't have a strategy. Me and my brother just said, look, we're just going to go in there mm-hmm. and be ourselves, wherever it takes us. So the fact that it took me to week nine. No strategy I, at all. I swear. Okay. I I, I'm not the type of person that would just... Um, say things because to create a narrative honestly we had no strategy just be yourself my brother always used to tell me before we even got on the show look mm. all we need is a stage mm. big brother was a stage and you guys saw what you saw okay we're gonna well, i'm gonna get back to you let me get to cassia so cassia to me was like the small pepe you know <laughs> you're just like a cassia some point for she's quiet and then all of a sudden just like i'm like hey wahala <laughs> Um, but first of all, you've been killing the outfits for your media rounds. I haven't seen. I told you when you, you know you came yeah. in. Good to Thank see. You. Happy. When is going to be your eight months anniversary? Is when tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Happy eight months anniversary in advance. Thank you so much. How do you feel that you're not going to be in the house? I feel good. The fact that it's there, yeah, it makes me happy. Yeah, because him being there, he's been there for the both of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you enter the house as besties. Mm-hmm. Yes, we knew you were married. What was the most challenging part about maintaining that lie for you, Cassia? It felt like it was more challenging for you. Yeah. <laughs> so what was, what, was, what was the most challenging thing about it? Okay, um, the most challenging part of it was that um, one of my love languages is uh, physical touch. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure you guys saw We caught that. you a few times, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> um, like every day in our normal life... Mm-hmm. I normally grab his butt. I can't even come. I think there was, one of the <laughs> yeah. there was a video in the kitchen of you doing that. <laughs> yeah, we saw that. <laughs> I can grab his butt more than 30 times in a day. So mm-hmm. before going into the house, I was like, how am I going to cope with this? <laughs> <laughs> how would I maintain this? Yeah. So, but he was always there to remind me that, you know why we're here. Don't do this. Don't lose God. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so... He helped me. <laughs> yeah. But knowing that your husband is in, is in a prime position to win this money, he's, he has a good chance yeah. at winning. What emotion does that stir up in you? Sorry? What em- how do you feel about knowing that your husband might win the show? I feel good about that. Just, just good. <laughs> I'm excited. Mm-hmm. But then we still have to wait. Too. For, to I mean, of course, it's not a sure too. deal, but he's a potential, you yeah. know, competitor for the for yeah, the, for the win. Happens, but I'm being hopeful, though. Okay. Does. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm gonna go a bit, might be a bit uncomfortable now. So there was a bit of the family drama last week, where it was. 
kind of like a decision for one person to step back and you were the sacrificial lamb, right? Um, how do you feel, you know, about viewers or family members sacrificing your place, you know, in the house for a chance for your husband to grab the, the win? I feel they made the right decision. Mm. Yeah, because it was his whole idea for her to go into the house. Oh. Yeah, so I, it's the best decision they made and also is the head of, it, of the house. Mm. Yeah, so it's okay for him to win the money. I mean, his money is our money. <laughs> I kind of felt like you were going to come out and mud the people that were defending this. <laughs> <laughs> because there was a big fight online. Like, how? Why? But anyways, um, <laughs> here you have a take on, you know, that situation. So for Tofa, uh, what up, what up? <laughs> um, let's talk about Anita, which was a big part of your entire oh. stay in the house. In fact, she tries to hold herself together. And then I tuned in my television at 1230 and I saw Anita crying and nearly, you saw that already. Yeah, Did you see that? that? Nelly was consoling her. So clearly it definitely, you know, affected her deeply. But my question, now that you're out of the house, away from the game, and you've had time to sort of reflect, how do you feel, really feel about Anita? And is this something that you are, you know, open to making it official in your end? Right. Yeah, thank you very much for that question. So like you said earlier, I'll just keep it sweet and short. Um, we have a special bond. When she's out of the house, we explore. Um, everyone was privileged to see season one of that story. Season two will be out soon. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet and short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't answer. I said, how do you feel about her? I definitely really like her. Yeah. yeah. We. She's my personal person. She's my safe space. Aww. And um, yeah, what we shared was real mm -hmm. and really genuine. So yeah. Okay. All right. So of course, I'm going to dissect every angle of opinions around the ship to Anita. So quite a number of view viewers, a few housemates as well, also pointed out that, you know, yeah, like Tofa, I just wish he, he had a, a backbone, you know, in that relationship. Actually, someone said that. A uh, backbone? What yeah, does that mean? Kind of like be more assertive sometimes. Okay. You know, for instance, the instance where she's probably just very assertive or rude to you, but it's like you don't sort of stand your ground. Mm -hmm. um, just a few times, you know, we've seen that. You know, especially when she speaks, sorry, maybe she's angry about something, speaks to you in an assertive way or a rude way. And it's like, why do you choose to sort of tolerate it? Is there like a deeper reason in your reluctance to stand your ground? Sometimes. That doesn't mean you have to. It felt like all the time it was more like, you know, you just let it happen. Yeah. Interesting. Um, keep it short and sweet again. <laughs> um, <laughs> So disrespect means different meanings to di different yeah. people. And what I consider disrespect is different to me. I'm the one in that situation. Mm. Um, few times that she raised her tone, we addressed it. But the thing is that in the heat of the moment, you cannot really control how someone would speak. Mm. And um, when, when everything is settled... I would now speak about the tone that you next time just take out this tone. And the thing is that most times where she raised that tone, I was actually at fault. And the thing is that they probably didn't show what I did, they just showed the reaction. Mm. So people need to understand um, situations before they address it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to disrespect disrespect in any way. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Mm.